Hello everybody and welcome to another Python 3 tutorial video. Uh, this video is going to be covering threading in Python. I'm including this in the basics series, not really sure I should include it as a basics video, um, but it is a pretty general topic to do some threading and so I thought it would be a good video to cover. Plus, Python by its nature is very uh, linear and it'd be nice to do some parallel tasks from time to time and use a little bit more of your, your processing power. So. With that, let's go ahead and get started uh, with threading. So with threading, it's a part of your standard library, so you don't have to actually download anything or install anything. You already did it when you installed Python 3. So let's go ahead and import threading, and that's the name of the module. And then we're going to go ahead and use also this Q ability uh, that is also part of your standard library with Python. So we're going to say from QUEUE, -U -E, import capital QUEUE. -U -E. And then finally, we're going to import time. And what we're going to use time for is actually just to mimic processing time. Uh, but uh, later on, you know, you, you would add it. It's in the, we're going to use sleep, right? Uh, in place of sleep, you would do some sort of function calculating. But anyway, moving on. So <clears throat> the idea of threading is that you can perform multiple tasks at one time. Now, one of the things that can cause trouble really quickly when you're performing multiple tasks is if there are any shared variables between the tasks that might be performing um, simultaneously. So say two, you've got two tasks and each task you know, goes around and I don't know, counts Skittles. And the starting variable was five, the task found five more Skittles, it adds five plus five and it updates the new variable to equal 10. Well, what if at the same time another thread was searching for some Skittles and it found three Skittles. And at the same time, he references, uh, at the same time that the other thread is working and referencing that variable, they both reference that variable as a five. One adds three to that five, the other one adds five to that five. Whoever updates last gets their say, but both of them are wrong no matter what, right? So one guy says there's 10, one guy says there's eight. Whoever updates last gets their say, but no matter what, they're incorrect, right? Because the right answer is actually 13, okay? And so this causes problems when you have shared variables because um, there might be double modification, or not double modification, but really only one of the modifications gets passed through. Um, so anyway, um, it's pretty much integral. So you might see a lot of uh, threading tutorials. My first threading tutorial was a great example where uh, we did not account for this. And this is kind of a major issue. I think that it's kind of silly, like you would do threading um, and not use this. Uh, there are some tasks, I suppose, where they might not ever uh, coexist as far as, or they might not share a variable, but a lot of times they are gonna share a variable or a database or whatever. Um, and it's important that we use what is known as a lock. So the idea of a lock is each lock that you need. So say you've got you know the Skittle count variable. Um, you put a lock on the Skittle count variable and the way this works is whenever a uh, you know, function or whatever wants to access that variable, it locks that variable. And then whenever it's done you know, modifying that variable, so from the point of reference to the modification basically, we wanna lock up that variable as we're using it and modifying it. And then uh, from there, we're finished modifying it and then we unlock it. And this means that another thread or process can access it and modify it. So if uh, you know, a thread tries to access a uh, locked variable, it will sit there and wait sort of like a queue um, until that variable becomes unlocked, then it will lock it back up, do what it needs to do, then unlock it and move on. Now, describing this process t takes a little bit of time, but actually this happens very quickly. Um, so you're not really sacrificing too much time doing this, but it's absolutely necessary if you have shared variables. So the first thing that we want to do is we're going to, we're going to use a lock on printing. So we're going to say print underscore lock equals threading dot uh, lock. Okay. So we're referencing the locking ability of the threading module and print lock. Basically what you have to have is you have to have a lock per thing. So for our, for printing, um, what happens is we're you know using this print function. It's not even a variable really, but it's a print function. So each time something wants to use the print function, uh, it checks to make sure that if the print function is locked or not. Because what will happen, and I think did happen in my original threading tutorial, was we would print out what uh, what thread was running at the time, 
And the problem with this is sometimes you would have this like overlap, right? It would be like this jumbled up mess of text because they printed at like a same time. And so it kind of converged the two. And, and even though this was, you know, not like a catastrophic thing that they were mixed, it was a perfect example of what will happen and you'll get data corruption basically like that. Um, so anyway, print lock, we're gonna use this to lock uh, printing. Now, um, I'm trying to think of what order I want to start with, but first of all, we wanna kinda, we're gonna try to visualize what we're gonna do. So what I'd like to do is like have, um, you know, we got, you wanna define a worker, you wanna define how many workers we have or how many threads we have. And then what do you want those threads to do? So I kind of think that what we'll do first is we're gonna say um, Q, the letter Q equals uh, Q U E U E, the capital Q, which is what we've just imported up here. And then we're gonna say for X in range of uh, 10, okay? So how many threads are we going to allow? We're gonna allow for 10 threads um, to do some work. Now, depending on what kind of work you're going to do, so the workers all have the same working function here. Um, they might have different working functions, and you might you might still start with 4x in range of 10 because you have 10 threads, and then you might have something that picks the function that it runs specifically, but for now, we're just trying to keep this as simple as possible, but yet as useful as possible as far as education is concerned. So we're going to say for x in range of 10, t uh, is going to equal threading dot capital thread, and then we're going to say our target uh, is going to equal threader. OK, so these are just for defining our threads and the target of our threads. Let me make some more space here. OK, and now what we're going to do is we're going to see t.daemon. And then we're going to say that equals true. So we're calling, oops, why is it not turning yellow? Um, so we're classifying this as a daemon. And so basically what's going to happen is it will die when the main thread dies. Um, so that's all, all we're doing there. Now, the next thing that we want to do is um, after you've done your daemon definition, then we can do t.start. So we start the threading, right? After we've defined it. So we couldn't do it until we said what it was, and so we've done that. Naturally, by default, I believe this is actually false, and so you would, you have to have this. So for x in range of 10, do that. And that's really it. Now we'll come down here and we're going to say start um, equals time dot time. And what we're going to be doing here, so this is the starting time and then at the end we'll do the ending time and we'll, we'll see how much time this has taken for like performance calculations. And the idea here is to see, you know, um, how much time it took versus how much time it should have took if it was programmed in parallel. Or I mean if it was programmed linear, linearly. Couldn't talk. So now what we're going to do is assign some jobs. So we're going to say for worker in range of 20. So what this does is it just says for whatever variable we want. So we're calling that variable worker in range 20. So basically we've got 20 instances here for the workers. Um, we're going to say q uh, dot put and then worker. So basically we're, we're putting literally putting to work a worker. Um, to the queue, which is here, okay? So we're doing that. Now, um, what we're gonna go ahead and do is come down here after this for loop, we're gonna say queue.join. And what this does is basically wait until the thread will terminate. And after that, um, we'll come down to the bottom here and we're gonna say print, um, entire job took and then if you recall we had start so we'll take start and use comma start minus time dot time and what that's going to print out for us is oops actually what we need to do is uh, <laughs> time dot time minus start and that will print out you know how many seconds basically uh, this this whole process uh, took now uh, a couple of things that we need to do here is first of all we have um, we've got everything set up basically how we want to organize this queue we've got um, 20 jobs that we want to do and we've got 10 workers that will work on this job okay now what we want to do is we've got queue 
um, equals Q. Um, above this, we'll do um, define, and we're going to say our example job. And basically, this is you know what job are we actually going to have these workers do? And the parameter that we'll pass through is worker for the example job. And all this example job is going to do is some really heavy processing that just so happens to take time dot sleep uh, 0 0.5, so half a second for this this job to complete. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say with print lock. And so it's going to with this lock, what is it going to do? It's going to perform this operation. And the operation is going to be it's a lock on it's going to be print. Um, but you can't perform this operation without, uh, while this lock is locked, basically. Um, we're going to print, um, and we'll print threading, whoops, threading dot current underscore thread dot name, and then uh, we'll print worker. So this will print the current threads. Uh, threader's name basically and the worker so and then when it's all done with this it will release that print lock okay so we can you can see how how um, open this lock is um, with what we can do so anyway uh, when it's done there now what we need to do is we've got everything done except for the target so the target is what threader so we don't have anything that corresponds to threader yet so we have to define that, and that'll be the last thing that we have to define here. So we'll define threader, empty parameters. And basically what threader is going to do is the actual threading operation that we have to do. So this is, you know, this is our queue basically here. This is our queue, job assignment, and then how many threads we have. And now we actually have to thread whatever we're threading. Okay, so we actually have to perform the threading operation. So we're going to say while true, so this will continue going on until the main thread dies and then all of the demons will die because the main thread is complete. So while true, we're going to say worker equals queue.get. So this is getting the worker from the queue. We literally put the workers to work to the queue. I just love queue.putworker, sorry. Anyway, um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to say example job worker so we're passing worker through what we happen to call worker in the example job. Puts that worker to work, and what it, all of that worker is going to do is this example job that sleeps for five sec or 0.5 seconds, half a second, and then prints some information about the threader out for us. So example job worker, and then finally <clears throat> we're going to go q dot task underscore done, and then basically we're saying this thread is complete um, and we're ready to move on. Okay. So a lot of code. Um, before I go and explain it, let's go ahead and run it, or do it like one more explanation real quick through of summary. But let's go ahead and run it first. We'll come over here, and we get <clears throat> thread, you know, nine, all the threads basically that ran, and then we get the job number basically, the work job number. So these are we have ten threads total. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So these are all unique numbers, and then below it are all unique numbers. So here we've got thread 5, 5, 8, 8, 4, 4, 2, and you see the, the similarities there. So those were the threads. We had 10 threads total, and then this is basically job number, okay? Um, so we can close this, and <clears throat> now let's go ahead and talk about why this is so important. So we had, again, we had 10 threads, 20 jobs. Each job took 0.5, uh, 0.5 seconds. So normally, this should have taken, with 20 tasks to do at 0.5 seconds each, should have taken 10 seconds total to perform this operation. But as we can see, it actually took more like one second. Now why did it take one second? Well, we had 20 jobs and 10 workers, so or 10 threads rather. So each thread, by you know, sheer math, had to do two jobs. Each job was 0.5 seconds. So our total time was actually only one second, a little bit over one second, but probably some time is spent just printing, you know, doing print operations. So you can see how much time was spent doing those. So that's threading, okay? And that's why threading is so powerful and useful is because while we have one thread idle, we can actually be doing work with another thread. Um, but it, of course, it's necessary to have the locks and all of that. So let's run through the script one more time just to do kind of an overview of, of what what, we're, what we've done here 
uh, since this can get kind of confusing for people. So um, importing threading, imported queue, the queue is its own little thing. You can use queue for all sorts of things. You don't have to use queue for threading, but it's really useful to do it. And then time, just so we can sleep. Print lock is a special lock that we've applied to any print function. If we remember our counting Skittles example, so let's say you were counting Skittles and then you were also counting Starbursts. I want some candy. Um, you know, you would have a, a Skittle lock and you'd have a Starburst lock, and they'd be two totally different things, right? You wouldn't want to have candy lock because you'd be screwing. You know, anytime someone was counting Skittles, it would be blocking out everyone that was trying to count Starbursts and M&Ms. Okay, so we've got print lock. It's a lock. Here we've just defined an example job. That job is just mimicking any sort of rough computing, um, saying it's taking a half a second to compute whatever it is. Um, and then we're saying with that lock we can print some information and when it's done printing it releases the lock and then so someone else can print. Then we have threader and basically the threader is literally the core function here and the core idea and it, the idea here is that we can thread things. So we're saying worker or the thread, right? We're saying q.get and we get the thread or worker and then we run that worker through example job and then as soon as that worker is done we say q task done and basically what we've done is we've released that thread or daemon back to the queue and say okay he's available again to be uh, given some work um, so that's the threader now then we come down here and we actually start using these functions and we say okay q equals q for x in range of 10 uh, so these are our 10 threads we're saying t equals threading a thread target equals threader so basically we're saying that t is our kind of like our worker sort of or a thread and its target is to run through threader uh, which will run them through tar example job. Um, again, I uh, just really want to drive this point home with the uh, functions. As you can see here, example job. Um, normally when you define functions, it's, you, know, you can either define them after the fact, right? We could say this equals this, but we could have also put threader above example job if we wanted. That would have been totally fine. Um, anyway, coming back down here, we run them through. We're saying that T, this thread is a daemon. We're saying that's true and what that means it's kind of like a background little task that does operations. You can literally think of it like a little daemon or something <laughs> like you're doing work in the background. Basically what it means though is that when the main thread dies, so when we get through all 20 jobs, uh, all of these little dudes will die because we don't need them anymore. So we've done that. Start equals time at time. Really simple stuff. It's just we're just taking note of when this function started. And then we're saying for worker in range 20, um, Q dot put the worker to work. So if there's a worker available in Q, we put him to work um, for up to 20 jobs. And then when we're all done, we say Q dot join, which is basically saying wait until this thread terminates to put the Q or the, the worker back basically. And then also at the end, we'll just we kill everything. And then at the very end, we're just saying entire job took time dot time. So what's the current time minus the starting time equals how many seconds it took. Um, and we saw that it was basically like 1.05 seconds. So anyway, hopefully that is a uh, useful overview of the threading uh, functionality. Uh, hopefully it's a little bit better. I didn't, I wasn't too happy with my original threading tutorial for Python 2.7. So kind of nice to be able to go through it again with Python 3 since I have a slightly better understanding of how threading works now and I've actually used it. Um, on various jobs. So anyways, if you guys have any questions or comments, uh, please feel free to leave those in the section below. I'll do my best to help you guys out if you have any trouble here. Uh, as always, thank you for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions, and until next time.